he speaks to them through the inner voice, inner witness, through the visions and dreams and many of these things. Hallelujah. And I hope that these things are not just the textbook color things for us or just that ah, we have it in our textbook. They've taught us before, praise God. Mm -hmm. And it's not practical in our lives. Hallelujah. For the things that we talk about here, they are a matter of how we like it, life and death. Praise God. Why? Because they are what help us to live through life as believers. And we've done a lot about that. And I think last week we talked about staying in your name, hallelujah, or staying in where God has assigned you to and being focused there. Praise God. For in there you will find peace and you will find joy. Praise God. So now, today we are moving into another dimension of that or another dimension of God's leading, which is spiritual authority. Spiritual authority. As one who is born of God, as one who is a child of God, it is important for you to understand that spiritual authority is key. And sometimes we get so like a desert and we forget that we actually have this spiritual authority. So we move like logical people, we move like philosophical beings, we move like people who just go through life. We forget that there is something called spiritual authority. And you should not deceive yourself. The fact that God has told you that this is your path or this is your way doesn't mean the devil is not going to throw some deception your way. Praise God. Or does it mean that the devil is not going to try to make some opposition? As a matter of fact, the fact that you are following God's plan already makes you a main target or a primary target. And if you do not understand your spiritual authority, there will be problem. Why? Because you will be like those people who start something and then check it out. Whereas it is God's plan for you, all the devil ever did was put up a smoke screen. Hallelujah. And then he put the smoke screen there that many people today, the reason they have not launched into one of their fields or do something is for the fear of the people at the village. Praise God. Or for the fear of their village people. Praise God. Or for the fear that what if I step out and the devil comes to try me. Or for the fear of what if this is wrong. You know, they put all that and they never step into God's plan. They just remain there and say, I'm never moving forward. Praise God. I mean, they don't say I'm never moving forward, but in actual sense, their life, they don't want to move forward. They will move forward in other aspects of life, but not in God's plan. Praise God. Yeah. And it's important for us to understand that we have spiritual authority as children of God. Second Corinthians chapter 5 and 17, the Bible says, If any man be in Christ, he's a what? He's a new creature. Behold, all things are passing away, and all things are become what? New. He's a new creature, but this creature is not after the flesh he can. Because that which is one of the flesh is what? His flesh, and that which is one of the spirit is what? His spirit. <coughs> Praise God. So you must understand. So even though you are standing ground, even though God has shown you a vision, even though God has shown you your path, you still have to maintain or remind yourself of the spiritual authority that you have. Because if you don't know, somebody said, any small breeze that blows, you will shake. Any small deception that comes, you are off track. Hallelujah. And there is nothing, sincerely, I keep saying something, we might say we understand grace, but there are some things you can't take away from some legalistic people. It is their understanding of spiritual authority. Praise God. You can't take it away from some many of them. Why? They understand the place of the devil and they put him there. That's why you find some, praise God, I always mention Bishop William, you, you, you hear him talk so confidently, daring the devil, putting him, put him in his place. And then you think, what is special about this people? Praise God. Understand of spiritual authority. Because as Christians, if we don't take over, or rather, if we don't take charge, or put the devil in his place all the time, there will be problems. We will live under his fear. Praise God. Hebrews chapter 2, verse 14 to 15. Many years ago, when I first got born again, I came from one background that we were so spiritually inclined. What are we spiritually inclined? I mean, we know, both of us here are Nigerians. Many are Nigerians here, yeah? and then there are always things where you think that you say, ah, somebody is spiritual in the family and is responsible for so many. Do you, do you have those people in your family? Have they told you about those people in your family? Praise God. Some of them even have So every time you are praying, you direct your prayers and that's it. You say, oh God, if only 
and tissue puller with that. <laughs> that is it. I remember I came to make me in the office and I was saying that I was praying, I prayed God for two hours, and next thing I heard the woman died, I was rejoicing. <laughs> Praise God. We have that mindset so strong that oh, there's this thing, spiritual things are real. So you dream. Somebody says something. Say, why is it that a Nigerian person, whenever he dreams and sees demons, that's when the dream is real. Well, that's when the dream is a vision. When he sees food in the dream, it's dream. But when it is somebody pursuing them, or somebody is trying to eat them up, then it is a vision. Then it's not running up and down. Praise God. But we have that mindset. So whenever you have a troubling dream, you're afraid. You wake up from the bed. Some people can't sleep with the light off. Hallelujah. Because when they sleep with the light off, my uncle used to ask me, did you kill someone? <laughs> if you didn't kill anybody, why are you afraid? Because you're just thinking there's one demon standing there. Because we live in the fear of demons. And for those of you who are Christians also, but Christians on one side, every time you wake up to pray at 2 a.m., you will spend three hours binding and casting all the demons. You know the names of different demons. In the area, the demons of the air, the demons of the water, all of you that know the names. You tell me how you got their names. But you buy, you spend three hours. And those of you who pray in my father's altar, wherever they are mentioning my name, cash, fire. You pray these prayers without understanding. And yet you don't know that acknowledging and continuing to live in that constant fear actually means we are living under the bondage of the devil, the deception of the devil. Praise God. Mm -hmm. So we must understand our spiritual authority. Because he's not going to let you have it easy. Though it looks like he has power, but something I'd like to tell you is the greatest power the devil has is deception. Mm -hmm. Notice. The greatest power he has is deception. Mm -hmm. And when you fall for his deception, what happens? You come under his own. And the truth is, the devil doesn't have as, have as much power as you give him. Praise God. He uses the authority you give him. We're going to go for that. Hebrews chapter 2. The Bible says, In as much as the children are partaking of flesh and blood, he himself, talking about who? Christ Jesus, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might what? Destroy. What is the word? He destroyed him. That had the power of death. That is who? The devil. And release those who through fear of death were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Can you see that the devil is a destroyed enemy? And a defeated enemy. Put this at the back of your mind. So when I hit you up one again, this woman said, before I go, she said, I'm going to give you a book to read. And then she gave me that book. And I read this book. The book is called Winning Invisible Battle. When I read that book, I saw the nothingness of the devil. I saw his defeated nature. I realized that the only thing we need to remind the devil is of his defeated state. And when we do that, he feels for it. That's why the Bible will say confidently, resist him steadfast in the faith. And when you resist the devil, what will he do? He will flee because he is defeated. Andrew Mark said something, only people who are undefeated go into battle. When there is no winner, then you go into what? Into battle. But when there is victory, it is no longer battle. It is now a what? A walk over. Praise God. And now this is what Jesus did. He put the devil at his place. A defeated foe. Never to raise his head again. Hallelujah. And as a believer, the truth is, no matter how it looks like, whether you imagine the devil having horns, whether you imagine him looking like a wolf, whether you imagine him in black, whatever, whatever image, as I'm speaking now, there's an image of the devil that's appearing in your mind. Praise God. There's an image that's a picture. Whatever image that is, remember this always, he remains defeated. So you're not fighting with him to claim who is the winner. Do you get this? You're not fighting with him to claim who is the winner. You're actually reminding him, bro, you've been beaten. Remember, Jesus said, Fear not, for I have what? I have overcome the world. So we must understand as believers that the devil has been defeated. Colossians chapter 2 is always another place that I like to see. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Praise God. Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. The Bible says, Having first, in verse 14, it says, He has brought out all the handwritings of ordinances against us. 
whatever was he has spotted it out. The requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it where? To the cross. Now the next one he now says, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them. Triumphing over them. Glory to God. Triumphing over them. Please, can you put up NLT before I bring it to my put it up? NLT version. He says, in this way, what did he do? He disarmed principalities. Rulers and authorities, he shamed them how publicly by his victory over them in the cross. I like to break something down. Hallelujah. What is having spoiled? When he says having spoiled means about his powers, a pen to my, it means he stripped him off. First of all, whatever authority he thought he had, Jesus stripped him off. It's, it's totally to unclose. Hallelujah. That's what that word means. It's to unclose someone totally. Whatever authority he thought he had, he had that. Jesus stripped him off naked. Hallelujah. And then he did not just do that, he made a public show. Dematizo. He made a public show of him. Triumphing over the enemy. Do you know those times? When they conquer a king, what do they do? They strip him off. Of whatever the guy that he has, and then they drag him in front of people. In the Roman army call it a triumphant procession. So they drag him just to show his nothingness. Praise God. And they are showing people. And you know the funny thing that I discovered is they don't just drag him, they cut off his two thumbs so that he will never be able to hold a sword to tell you he will never be able to fight again. And then they cut off his big toes, he will never be able to roar. Can you see this? He is totally incapacitated. That's the same thing Jesus did to the devil here. Having squad brings a bad disembowels. He made a public show everybody saw it. Triumphing over the name. And he not he displayed it. Dragged him, showing him that this guy is nothing. He's nothing. Praise God. The God did not, Jesus never ever at any point sent us into the world to fight against the devil. He sent us into the world to preach the gospel. Hallelujah. Why? You don't fight an enemy that has been defeated. The only thing he told you is, Lo, I am with you what? Always. Fear not, you will have tribulation, but I have what? Overcome. So we must understand as believers, see, there is no fear for the devil in you, or there is no fear in you for the devil to let. Stop living at the mercy of the devil. Or at the mercy of the devil's opposition. I remember I said something. The devil has nothing else to give than what deception. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 11. He says, Put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand all the wiles, the activities, devices. It's just a way to put a, a small screen there. So he says, He looks at them and he says, Are you sure God told you this? Hmm. What if he didn't tell you? It's a deception. Are you sure God asked you to be here? Are you sure that you two are doubting it? You see, the moment you give in to that fear, whatever he puts or whatever he does to you is you that give him that power. Praise God. Because he has no authority anymore. The Bible says Jesus Christ, uh, he has been exalted, he has seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all principalities and powers over everything that is there. That the mention of his name, every knee was bowed, and every tongue was confessed that what Christ is God to glorify. So we see a man that has been defeated. But the truth is, he throws wiles and tricks. I remember when Paul was talking to them, asking them to forgive the brother, he said something that, let the devil have smart us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. He's just a cunning man. When Peter says, be so. Be vigilant. For the devil, as a roaring lion, rose and man, seeking whom he may devour. He only tries to devour one that is weak or who has no understanding. So, as a believer, you must remember that you have this authority over him because you are born of God. Praise God. He says, the, the wind blows, you don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know where it's going. So is every man that is born, that is born of the Spirit. If you were born after the flesh, you would say you are flesh. But now, are you born of the flesh? Brother, you are born of the Spirit. Praise God. 
and you are not just born of any kind of spirit, you are born of the Spirit of God. Spiritual authority is necessary. See, it is not fanaticism. It is not extremism. It is necessary for we are in this world. If you think affirming your spiritual authority is fanaticism or extremism, you are deceiving yourself or you are shortchanging yourself. Because the dude out there, whom is called the defeated devil, is looking for how to ensure that you don't understand what you have. And when he knows that you don't know what you have, he tries to make a mess of you. There is nothing nice in the devil. There is nothing calmly or calmly about him. There is nothing handsome about him. All that is in him is wickedness and evil. Praise God. No matter how we paint it to you, no matter how good it looks. Sometimes the challenge that you're facing is not that God is saying don't go there. The challenge you're facing is because you have not affirmed your spiritual authority in that area. That's all. And it just remains there. And for as long, I read that book of Sidney Wiggles once, and then he said something about how a lady was going to, she was, I think she was going to work and she was going to join the bus. So as she was going to the bus, her dog was coming, following her. It was a small dog. So she kept saying, Get back! Let me use the number of my dog. Get back, Cookie! Get back! The dogs kept following. Kept following. So when she got to the bus, the dog didn't go back because she was being nice. Praise God. So by the time the bus was coming, and she really wanted the dog to go. She said, Get back! Immediately the dog went. She stand out for it. Then the people say, That's how you treat the devil. So when you sit out there, you're being nice, you're not standing in your authority. He will sit in your house and make himself a cup of coffee. Praise God. And he will enjoy himself. That's the truth. You need to affirm your authority as a spiritual being. Praise God. You don't live your life at the fear of your witches and wizards. That's why I cannot one chance in my in my news. Ah, if these people here, village people, they will come for me. Is it them that sent you? When he says, greater is he. That is a you, that he that is in the world. Did you forget that? Hallelujah. Sometimes the problem with us is we feel like responding authoritatively to challenges is getting too extreme. Sometimes you feel like that. So if you can, so when, when a little thing comes up, you sit down and you start explaining it. Uh, maybe it's just this, maybe it's just that. We'll go back there. It is well, God is with us. And right there and there, He just needs you to speak. And you will see that it's supposed to disappear. Try it and see what happens. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Right there and there. If I told you this seat or this form belongs to you, you know it and says it is mine. But you know it is yours. But you know say, but I remember it is well, shall I take it? What? <laughs> Especially if it's iPhone X, oh no. But bless God, he got to understand his spiritual authority. And he says, ever since then, he's about over how many years in ministry now. And he said he has never ever been threatened by the demons again. Ever since he understood his authority in Christ Jesus. It's the same thing here. He says, be strong in the Lord. For we are not wrestling against flesh and blood, but against weak rulers and authorities of the unseen world, against mighty powers and the dark world, against evil spirits in heavenly places. One notice these people have been defeated. They all just want to keep throwing strategies and work to distract us. But here, look at what he says. He says, therefore, put on every piece of God's armor so you will be able to resist the enemy, enemy rather, in the time of evil. Then after the battle, you will be what? Standing firm. How do you do this? Stand your ground, putting on the what? The belt of truth. Notice all these things that you're using to stand in this authority are not even yours. They are what he has provided. Stand your ground, having the belt of truth. You know what the truth is, you know Christ is the truth, right? He's the truth. He's the word of God. Gird your voice with the belt of truth. And the body armor of God's righteousness. And that translation calls it the breastplate of righteousness. But that righteousness is not yours. It is who? God. Because we are His righteousness. You get what I'm trying to say? We are His righteousness. So now we wear His righteousness. So when the devil comes, he's not finding anything against us. Why? Because we have God's righteousness as our breastplate. 
Because some people watch war movies, you see how presidents look like. You put it on, get yourself with the belt of truth. He says, that with your for, for shoes, put on the peace that comes from what? The gospel. Or the good news. So that you will be what? Fully prepared. Hallelujah. It's how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of grace. Praise God. That's the gospel of our Lord. Put on your shoes. And then the next one now says, in addition to all this, hold up the shield of what? Of faith. To stop the fiery arrows of the devil. What is faith? Faith is a persuasion of God's truthfulness. You have an absolute trust in Him. You see, all these weapons are not yours. So you put on the belt of truth. You put on the breastplate of righteousness. You carry the shield of faith. I like what he says in the next one before he said, put on what? Salvation as your helmet. Hallelujah. And take the sword of the spirit, which is what? The word of God. All these weapons are no yours. So he said, no matter what the devil throws on, stand in the authority and command it. The truth, my righteousness, my salvation, that's what you used to stand against. Because when you point all this to him, he sees his defeated nature. Friends, stop being calm and melancholy about devil's oppression around you. Stop being it. Stop. You can't sit down and let he's, he's meandering, he's meandering, and then you're not realizing that. I think this thing is gone. It, uh, sorry, it's the devil trying to throw some shakes. No, you have to rise from this moment. Sometimes you sleep. You know, the Bible says, the enemy came, why men said, the enemy came and what? So tears. Yeah, Sometimes we forget. I'm not saying God is not with us, but we forget that we have the spiritual authority. Well, so when we get to, ah, to, you're going through this, oh my God. Yes, you're sympathetic. But you shouldn't forget. If this thing is an opposition of the devil, you stand authority. You don't say, ah, it will pass. No, sometimes you stand your ground. Sometimes it's just a smoke screen to stop you from going to the next place. Sometimes there are challenges, he just wants to blow against you. So Jesus, when he looks at the storm, he does that. Because he knows he has authority. He said, peace one, peace to you. When he, when he preached to the people and then there was no food to feed them, he said, come on. The Bible says, he himself, he knew what he would do. He made everybody sit down and say, Father, I thank you for your provided. You just have to exert your authority at all. You can't go through life being a mellow, mellow, it is well, it is well, it is well, it is well. But you are not remembering that sometimes you remember the devil, not sometimes, all the times, you are reminded of his position. That is a defeated person. A defeated person. Praise God. And how do we respond in this? He says, respond with God's word. Respond with the truth. That's the truth. So when he comes for you, you put up his says, man, he says, that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the Lord. I will serve the Lord is my refuge, is my fortress. In God will I trust. He says, Thou shalt not be afraid of the terror man, you know, the hour that fight in the day. You are just understanding and you are proclaiming this word. A thousand shall fall by my side, ten thousand above, they will not come near me because I put my trust in God. There shall no evil come near my door. Praise God. It's the truth. He says, because he has set his love on me, I will give him long life, and I will show him what? The joy of salvation. That's what it's worth. So when he says, go ahead, and the devil says, are you sure God is with you? Hey! The man who says, no, I am with you always, even to the ends of the earth. If Jesus said that, then he meant it. If he said that, then he meant it. Because he never says what he doesn't mean. You respond in God's word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How God said, God is, how will I get a provision? How will this thing come? Your skinny ways. Did God ever tell you will ever be in a corner? Or that the world will box you and God will say, ah, I never expected it. I don't know what to do. No. He that watches over Israel, the need that sleeps, not slumber. That's the kind of God that I have. 
So you respond with that word. Oh, it's looking like it's not it right now. But I trust in my Lord. He has never failed me once. And he's not starting to do it. Get yourself the word of truth. Affirming authority. Praise God. So somebody calls you and says, I realize that you are going to die young. Ah, and then I say, Don't use me this well. Please, fast for four days. So, you know, right there, you're already getting, you're already living by the fear of the devil. Because when you start that thing, Hallelujah. Do you know what you start saying? You start praying with them. Oh, Father, anything that wants me to die young, kill them in the name of Jesus, anything. I will give you one life. And I will show you the joy of my salvation. Praise God. Remember when he says, he said in that city, a child shall die at what? A hundred. He said, shall be said that a child shall die at hundred. Oh, I think in the book of Isaiah. Praise God. You remind me of God's word. He said, this is not the covenant that I have with God. You, sometimes you need to respond immediately. Immediately. And cancel it out. So that it doesn't settle. I've said many times. The words of a believer can be found. That's what you want. The words of a believer, forget it. It carries power. Words carry power, especially the spiritual one. So when you declare some things, you declare these words in the name of Jesus, you're saying it as you want to do it. You will respond. Hallelujah. So they call you and yes, you go for church. But still, it is better that you fight it, you declare over it spiritually, and then you go to check up. Now you're going for check up consistently, and I'm not even responding spiritually. I'm not saying don't go for check up, but respond spiritually too. In the name of Jesus, this can happen. I'm not down with this sickness. I'm not down with this sickness. I speak in the name of Jesus. I have healed. Jesus healed people that were not believers. How much for you? He told people who are not believers, he said, great faith. Right? How much more? He told him, come on, Christ wants to heal people. He's not selecting of his healing. That man said, would you want to heal me? Jesus said, I am So you respond spiritually. Don't ever get to that point where they say you are too. It's better, uh, Bishop Bailey says, it's better they say you are too spiritual than they say you are too calm. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's better to be that side. At least that one you can be able to. I'm not saying the spiritual one you be seeing come where you say, ah, they have come for me. I'm not talking about that one. Praise God. That's not I'm not that's the spiritual, I'm talking about. Or every every person that works by you is a bank or praise God. That's not the spiritual one. But I mean it's better to be too spiritual or not to work. It is better. Than to totally be carnal about it. And not realize is the devil at work here. Ah, I see you here in the name of Jesus. Ah, because I speak over you. I have authority over you. You are defeated. I resist you this moment in the name of Jesus. Even if, like we say, even if thoughts begin to come to your head, God has told you, okay, you're moving now. You're going to do this now. And then thoughts begin to come. Are you sure you can do this? Are you sure you are up to this? Are you sure God told you this? Are you sure you even head well? You should resist immediately. Ah. Faithful is he that called it. Who also will do that? The God has said me is not turning back from me. Hallelujah. You respond without authority. I resist you. You have no ground here. In Hebrews, I remember when Bishop was saying, said, in Hebrews on the top of the he says, You have come unto Mazana, the city of the living God, unto the copy of human angels. You have come up to the spirit of just men made perfect. He said, I was there. And then what he said, I just caught that revelation immediately. And when I saw, I said, Devil, in this list, your name is not there. What are you doing here? That's revelation. See, in this list, in this list, you have come to the city of heaven. He's not even on that list. The people that we are with, oh, praise God. The church of the firstborn that are registered in heaven. That's where we are. Mm. And the devil is nowhere near there. Praise God. Mm. Praise God. Mm. There is no fear in you for the devil to rise. Please stop living and the fear of demons. Mm. Some time ago, I said, I'm praying for God to show me all the demons in front of me. I said, You have problems. They've been there. 
since eternity. Why do you want to see them? What is your business with them? Praise God. Or for those who want, who allow the devil to give them prayer points. What is your business? What's your business with seeing demons? You be your own man. Father, show me. Father, show me for the demons that are working. They will put you inside the world. Why? Because by the time you start seeing, it's not your father that is showing you. You are telling you, eh? Praise God. That's not your business. But whatever you see is up in the head, what do you do? You respond. He said, um, Kenneth Hagin was saying he was sharing, or Kenneth Hagin was sharing about a meeting that he was having. And he said, nothing was happening in the meeting. Everyone was dry. In the first or so, everyone was just dry and cold. Nobody was spend, responding to God's word. Nothing was happening. So he went into prayer. He said, as he was praying, he saw a vision, a monkey like creature hanging there. And that creature was responsible for bringing the cold water by the spiritual. So he said, the moment I saw the rest of in the name of Jesus, out, out, in authority. He said, the monkey was just running, but he had to move. Why? Resist the devil and you flee. He said, the moment he fell, I was there. Service people, people were responding. Glory to God. That's understanding. Authority. When I read that book, I mean, he tried my whole brain to he said, I saw Jesus speaking to me. And then while he was speaking, the devil came in between. And was it was, look at this, I, I like that story. When I hear that story, it was so funny. He said, while he was there, the devil came in between. And Jesus kept speaking. But he couldn't hear because the devil was, the, the, the creature was trying to stop him from hearing. So he was waiting for, you know, Jesus, the King of Kings. The Lord, the Lord of Lords. He's waiting for him to cast him. The demon out and stop me from talking, but Jesus just said that I was doing nothing. This is what I was saying, very trouble. I think he spoke and he asked Jesus, Why couldn't you shut the devil out? And he said, Jesus tell him, I can't do it. And he said, No, I didn't hear the word. Did you say you couldn't or you wouldn't? He said, No, I couldn't. He said, Why? Because I have given you that authority. It's to you. Jesus has defeated him. Jesus has defeated him. But he says, I have given you all of you and now over here, tread over serpent and scorpions. They will by no means hurt you. So they respond to what you say. Beware of a man who knows who backs him. Hmm. Beware of him. Hmm. When he knows who's with him. When both of you are talking logically, he's laughing. Both of you will get to that opposition when you are trying to do for mathematical equation to the crossover. He speaks in the name of Jesus. I conquer. And then he moves over. How do you do it? Is it magic? It's not magic. It's revelation. Man. Understanding who you are. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Praise God. Because I can see many of us here, we will graduate, we will leave, and then life will be throwing things and buffeting and all that. In the midst of all that, you must know where you take authority. You must know, especially for a man who knows he is led. Where he is so convicted of what God has put in his heart. You move. God can send you to a village, go and preach, and then you now saw one native doctor doing like this. Ah, I'm coming back to Canada. Praise God. <laughs> you can't do that. Ah, praise God. The one who sends Jesus with you. Do you know what I realize in any, in any days in life is that? God actually sends you, he does the work, he's only looking for you to take the front. You know that, right? Do you know that's why he is he's the one who will do it in this case. I mean, what power does an monkey have in Africa? No, 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 that's the that's realistic. He's just a normal person who is responding to what? To the calling or the leading of the Lord. And when he gets there, you find him, they send a team ahead before anyone could say. He comes ahead about months before, and now they just do is meet in a tent and they are praying. And as they are praying, praise God, they find a lot of native doctors in that town who just begin to come and you know drop their their charms, and many of them get born again. He's not mixing anything, just this. And this guy has been preaching the gospel for how many years? Praise God. When God sent you on an errand, He backs you. When he leads you, he backs you. When he leads you, he provides. Because he will not let any man come and say, I have made you who you are today. Praise God. He provides. 
So let him do the plan. But stand strong in his power. The last part of that plan that I like so much, he now says, pray in the spirit at all times and in every occasion. Ah, glory to God. This is important. This is important. Pray in the spirit what? at all times and in every occasion. I like that part. We have a language that is heavenly that God has given to us. We did not merit it, it was a gift. Praise God. And he says, when you speak in that language, you edify your mouth. You build yourself up. You come to realize what God has put inside of you. So what do you do? Don't be ashamed of speaking in tongues. It's a language you have. Don't be ashamed of it. You don't have to disturb your neighbor. Praise God. You don't have to look crazy, but you can bring the spirit always. Praise God. Make it a habit. In your class, at work, in the bathroom, on your bed, whenever it feels you feel something in your spirit. No holy power. Branos, Egretus, Egeria. Just speak it. Because in that moment, perhaps some revelation is going to drop in your heart. In that moment, you just get clarity and you say, okay, this is what I need to do. Bring the spirit always at all times. In that moment, it tells you move away. Or in that moment, you could just say, stop, don't move again, just stop for now. God does not just stop. Okay, I hear you, sir. I stop. Praise God. Mm -hmm. Because you have to be sensitive. If he's protecting you, you stand under his instruction. Mm -hmm. But you must know that the devil is defeated. So you're not living this life and you fear the devil every day. What if the devil does is <coughs> I'm trying to so the devil doesn't come for me. He's, he's everywhere. He's looking for the weak one. I used to say something, or uh, when you notice lions, when you want to attack or want to feed or be prey, they look at the bunch and they are trying to look for which one will be taking this tray away from the herd or which one is has open defenses and then they attack. They strike that weak one. And that's how the devil is looking to show me now. Who is that one that I will just go and tell that? How are you sure you have a right standing with God? And then when he tells that one, that one begins to that's true. That one is being at all. Romans chapter 8, verse 33. Who shall lay a charge against God's elect? Who? Oh, praise the Lord. Who will lay that charge? <laughs> praise God. Who dares accuse us whom God has chosen for his own? No one, for God himself has given us what? Right standing with himself. So when he comes to put some self-doubt in you, are you sure you are born again at all? Jesus Christ, he's not mine. But what shall separate us from the love of God? Shall you believe? In this life, nothing. Mm -hmm. I'm fully persuaded. I'm nothing that's separate from the love of God. Nay, in all these things we are what? We are more than conquerors. That's the truth. You remind him of the truth. All the time, put him in his place. Mm -hmm. All the time. Mm -hmm. All the time. He's a defeated foe. He has no power over you except for deception. But when you know when you are not ignorant of deception, you move on. Does that mean he will not stop trying? He always tries. Come on. He thought he could get over Jesus. Hallelujah. He always tries. That's how foolish he is. You know, I used to say something. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 says, No man knows the things of God except for what? The Spirit of God. So if you have the Spirit of God, that's you know the things of God. There's no way he never knows the things of God. Because he doesn't have the spirit of God. Praise God. So you have that access. That's why the Bible says we have what? The mind of Christ Jesus. We have that intellect. That's why we stay at tune with him. So when he comes at you, tell him no way. There is no way here. Some people do this in their family. When they realize that this thing is getting too much, they start and say, God, well, I'm speaking to you. There was a day I was praying one night. I saw him man talking like that. I laughed at him. I was like, what is this one doing? But now I've grown better, I understand. He was just affirming authority. And sometimes he needed to declare it openly. Because I'm speaking to you. You have no place here. Praise God. You have no control over my mother. She's healed in the name of Jesus. That's how you speak to authority. You have no control over my father. He is healed in the name of Jesus. No, I am not afraid of you. Why? Because this battle is not mine. It has already been won thousands of years ago. Why are you here? Because I'm victorious over you. I marched over you. In fact, we have been disgraced before. Do you want to be disgraced again 
in fact, you like this grace, you take it. That's how we give it to him. That's the truth. And they're using it well. Understand your place in the spirit. That's what you do. Of course, you don't use it for your selfish gain. You don't do it. I'm not saying about the kidney to Christ. But you know that we all have one common enemy, and that's who? The enemy. He's not your auntie that is your enemy. He's not. He's not your brother that is your enemy. He's not your grandma. Those people are not your enemy. We have one common enemy, and that's the devil. And you give him his place. For your auntie, you pray for salvation. Do you have the mind to do that? Praise God. <laughs> for your auntie, for your grandma, or whatever it is that you think of, that old uncle, you pray for salvation. Oh God, he is so much in darkness. If only you understand this life. Father, I pray for his heart that he will receive the gospel. I believe everybody who knows here does that. Praise God. I believe they had that man to pray for the salvation of those people they think are riches in their hand. <laughs> we have just one common enemy, and that's the devil. Mm. And then the Bible says, pray in spirit at all times and in every occasion. You don't know what to pray for in English again. Switch to tongues. It works. It brings clarity to your heart. When your heart is confused, as you continue to speak in tongues, you are getting stability. You're just getting it. Your mind is getting up. He's talking God. I believe you have this. Stay close to His word because that's the only way you can declare your victory. You can only know your victory when you are conversant with God's word. Because how do you know you've been victorious? But when you read the God, when you read God's word, you remember that He's been victorious over you. So in whatever path that God has assigned you, or whatever place He's leading you. Remember that you also have that authority. He is not going to come from heaven to cast it down for you. He is waiting on you to speak against it. Jesus said you will speak to this mountain and you will say, Be thou removed of what? Cast it to the sea because there will always be mountains. But he said, I will come down to move it for you. You will speak to it because I have given you the authority to speak to it. So when the mountain appears, you speak to it in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord, he has given me this career. He has said I should continue. A few pieces in my heart. But why are these people are there this much disappointment? This much opposition? What's going on? Ah, the devil, you are alive. Because God is with you. Kratusa, you resist him. And then you're, you're breaking rules. You're breaking rules. You're pressing that. That's why you have to pray this way all the time. Read God's word. Pray all the time. Remind yourself of his promises that he has declared over your life. Always remind yourself that. Nothing, nothing. When the Bible says nothing by any means can harm you, Jesus said that. He means it. When he said tread over serpent and scorpions, I'm not saying you should not go into the bush and look for scorpions to the Bible, but you understand what he means. Tread over serpent and scorpions. You will take any deadly thing and it will not hurt you for as long as you're staying with Nothing. And we saw that happen to Paul. Paul was right there and they were eating by the fire. The Bible says a snake came out and fastened himself to Paul's hand. What did Paul do? He just shook the snake into the fire. And nothing happened. They were waiting for him to die. But this man is on the cross. Remember when God told him, you will testify before Caesar in Rome. He knew. So praise God. That's what you should do. So when he's looking at, hey, this thing is looking beyond what you can do. This is not the normal challenge that everybody goes to. This one is like, every, the whole world is against me. Ah, this is when the devil you are alive. You lock yourself up in the room, and then you start blasting in tongues. And you are declaring God's word for as long as you can. There is no overdose in prayer. There is no overdose. There is no overtime in prayer. For as long as you feel like doing it, because you are talking to God, I will never tell you shut up. Don't talk to me again. Except when he has answered you and he has still asked me. <laughs> and you will not say, shut up, I have told you something. And if you are tired of praying with God, start worship. Give him praise. Fasting your eyes on him. But in fasting your eyes on him, your courage grows stronger. 
It's not the risk. I mean, we're working with God is not for those who are ready to teach the of God. That's why Jesus says, those who put their hands on the ground and are looking back, they are not, they are not fit for the kingdom. I'm looking for those who put their hands on the ground and they continue falling. That's why the psalmist says, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Praise God. Praise God. Now my main sense is out. Stand in your front. And I want you to just say some sort of authority is out. 